Welcome to part one of the Mojo project. This video introduces our current understanding of the different stages of planet formation. Planets form in disks around young stars. And these disks are mostly gas, 99% gas, about 1% dust. And even though it's only a small fraction of the total amount of stuff, we really care about that 1% dust because Earth, for example, is made entirely of that 1%. So the dust is important. Disks themselves are complicated objects. There's a lot of physical processes going on. And we're not gonna talk about the details here. Suffice it to say that they're complicated and understanding their structure is key for understanding where planets are forming. If these disks are like theaters, then the actors in planet formation are pebbles, planetesimals, and planetary embryos. Pebbles are small objects, typically, you know, the size of a grain of sand up to a small pebble. Uh, these are objects that drift very quickly within the disk. Planetesimals are larger. They're kind of potato-shaped, you know, asteroid-like things that you think of from Star Wars. Typically, their sizes are between 10 and 1,000 kilometers, roughly. And larger objects we call planetary embryos or sometimes planetary cores. These objects are at least 1,000 kilometers in size. And the planetary embryos where the terrestrial planets were forming, we think were about Mars size. That is about a tenth of the mass of Earth. Whereas in the outer solar system where Jupiter and Saturn were forming, we think that these planetary embryos or cores were more like five to 10 Earth masses, so much larger. So now let's talk about how pebbles grow into planetesimals and then into embryos. So first of all, we think that planetesimals form directly from pebbles. Pebbles can drift within the disk and they clump directly and jump into la much larger objects into planetesimals. So they, a kind of a group of, collect of, of drifting pebbles can be concentrated and clump directly into a larger body, like so. Then when a large planetesimal has formed, it, its growth continues by grabbing onto pebbles that are drifting by. These pebbles kind of continually drift by and the planetesimal is able to accrete a certain fraction of those and grow into a larger body, grow into a planetary embryo. When a planetary embryo has grown, if it's grown fast enough while there's still a lot of gas in the disk, then the embryo can accrete, can grab onto gas directly from the disk and grow into a gas giant planet. And when that happens, it also carves a, an, a, a ring, basically an empty ring, carves a gap within the disk. Once large planets form, they also undergo a process called orbital migration, which arises because of gravitational interactions between the growing planet and the gaseous disk. And what this movie is showing is a planet that's growing and migrating within a gas disk at the same time. So what you can see as the movie starts is that a planet's growing, it launches these spiral density waves, which act on the planet's orbit and cause it to shrink. And as the planet shrinks down, it's, it continues to grow and eventually carves a gap in the disk. Now in this movie, the planet's going around the star, but our camera is going around the star at the same rate as the planet. So we only see the planet going inward, whereas in reality, the planet's really orbiting at the same time. So this process of a planet's orbit shrinking, or sometimes growing, but usually shrinking, is called orbital migration. Another process that's really important in planet formation is dynamical instability. We think that most planets form on relatively circular orbits, but a lot of the planets that we see are on very stretched out orbits, and we think they get there by dynamical instability. So when a system forms many planets on circular orbits, those planets interact with each other gravitationally. They can change each other's shape, and sometimes their orbits cross. So in this movie, three giant planets orbit one star, and the two outer ones have kind of jostled each other enough to change their orbital shapes a little bit, such that they can end up crossing. They can end up being very close to each other. And they don't collide with each other, but they have a series of strong gravitational encounters. And the last gravitational encounter uh, in, in there, one planet gives the other one such a strong kick that it takes off and, and is gone. It's lost to interstellar space. And the surviving planet's orbit is no longer a nice circle. Instead, it's stretched out. It's an ellipse. It's an eccentric orbit. Finally, the last phase of the formation of rocky planets involves giant impacts between large bodies. Here's a, a, an animation of one of those, of a simulation of, of this process. So the growing Earth underwent at least five or 10 of these impacts, we think. And the last giant impact was with a similar sized body, something at least the size of Mars, bashing into the growing Earth. 
And that impact created a lot of debris. And the debris kind of launched out this disk of stuff. And we think that our moon grew from that debris. So these giant impacts are kind of the last violent phase of rocky planet formation. Now I've described all these different phases of planet formation as separate things, but they're really all happening at the same time in different places in the disk and they all can interact with each other. And so planet formation is much more complicated than just A then B then C then D. It's A and B and C and D all at the same time talking to each other. It's a complex process. Now the Mojo contribution here is that we've written several review papers about these key stages of planet formation and different bottlenecks in our understanding of how planet formation works. Mojo.